Okay, so now that we have all of our materials ready to go, we are ready to explore some of these watercolor techniques. So you need your sketchbook handy. And before we get going though, I have my water cup here and I am going to get the colors wet. So notice I am not touching my paintbrush to the um, paint, because I don't want to mix them all together, but I'm just putting a little drip of water in them. So if you are not planning on using all of the colors today, you don't need to get all of them wet. Now some of these might be a little wet if you had another class working on them before you, okay? So we're gonna kinda let those saturate and soak in here. But as a reminder, um, we are going to write down some things in our sketchbook. So we are going to be exploring watercolor techniques and we're actually gonna be creating an artwork while we're doing it. So the techniques that we are gonna be exploring are going to be wash, value, dry brush, gradient, salt, rubbing alcohol, saran wrap, wax resist, and wet in wet. Now, we will not get to all of these today. We're gonna kind of break it down into, um, into half of them. So what I want you to do right now is to take a second and we can pause the video. Um, go ahead and write down all nine of these. I think there's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine of them. Please write down all of those on in your sketchbook now. Okay, so now that you have those written down, we are gonna go ahead and get to work. So I'm gonna kinda use this as a checklist as we go so we can check off the ones that we have. So we have all of our materials ready to go. Um, watercolors nearby, water cup. Um, we have that rubbing alcohol and the salt um, and some of those other materials that we need too. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. You might not see my watercolor in the frame the entire time, um, but I'll kind of move things around a little bit. So the first one that we are going to do is wash. And this is kind of the most basic, simple watercolor technique that you guys have ever done. And you probably have used it all the time, okay? So I want you to pick a section, okay? And remember, you need to have at least nine sections on your taped um, project. If you don't, let's add in a piece of masking tape somewhere. So I'm just gonna pick, um, I'm actually gonna pick my smallest section because a wash is boring. So I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna pick this green. And what a wash is, it's just simply painting. So as you are doing this, your wash, when we're using watercolor, um, we want it to be nice and thin, okay? We want it to be very nice and thin so that we can see the paper through it because we can layer colors later on. So that is as simple as a wash is. So I don't want you to paint yet, um, but go ahead and we'll pause the video for a second and you guys can paint your wash. Um, so, we're gonna go ahead, and I should have told you guys this before, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint, um, so sorry, we're not gonna pause the video yet. Um, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint another section that is going to be a wash, and I'm gonna show you a couple of reasons why here in a minute. Um, I am gonna go ahead and I'm going to pick a section that is over here, a nice thin wash, and I'm using my paintbrush back and forth. So go ahead and paint two sections as a wash, and we will get back to these later on. So now we have two sections that are painted in as a wash. So I'm gonna take my little checklist here and I want you guys to follow along with this just in case you miss a day so you know which ones you've done. We have completed the wash, okay? So now we are gonna go in and um, we are going to practice value. Now for this one, you might actually wanna have a scrap piece of paper nearby so that you can practice it. So that this is not just on your final um, final copy. I would really recommend 
practicing it first because this is one of the most difficult ones. I'm going to kind of use a darker color so you guys can see. Um, but here, I'm going to start with the purple. And at the top here, it's going to start pretty dark. Now, as I go further down, I'm going to go ahead and let it wait a second. And I am going to rinse out my brush. And now I'm just going to grab clean water, okay? And I am going to start here and kind of work my way up backwards. So now you can see that that color is lightly starting to bleed down, okay? And I want to continue doing this all the way down. So I'm going to continue that again. So now this time when those colors bleed down, it's going to be a little bit lighter. So you can see that this is getting pretty watery. If you need to take a paper towel and blot it off, you can do that. Or just wait a second before you do that very last one. And I'm just going to kind of pull this color down. So I have quite a bit of water on there. You can go back in if you need something to be darker to add a little bit more of that color, but sometimes it works best if you wait for it to dry a little bit. So let me show you that before you try it yourself. I'm going to show you that on this test piece of paper. So I'm going to start here with my green going very dark. And I'm going to actually let this dry for a second. See, I got mine super, super watery there. So here I started with just the water. And now it kind of starts to bleed through. Um, I have a lot of water on here, so that's why it's getting pretty crazy. But I'm going to bring this down. And that's kind of the nice thing about watercolor is you can blend things out um, very easy by adding more or less water. Okay, so try that maybe on your test scrap piece of paper first um, and then pick a section to fill that in for your value. All right, so now we are going to go ahead. So I'm going to take my little checklist. We're going to mark value off of the sheet. Um, and we are going to look at um, two more techniques in this first part of the video. Okay. So the first one that we are going to do is probably going to be one of your favorite ones. And... <clears throat> That is going to be rubbing alcohol. So for this one, you're going to need that container that looks like water that says RA. I know it's kind of hard to see there on that lid, but what that stands for is rubbing alcohol. Okay. And, um, just don't, don't spill this please. Okay. So I'm going to pick a section and like I said, you can always practice on here. I like, I'm going to, I like this one. So I'm going to kind of choose this section over here. It works best if you are using multiple colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of this light blue and I'm going to mix it with this magenta. Oh, that doesn't go very well. Let's see if I can get more. There we go. So I'm going to mix it with a couple colors. I got lots of blues and greens and purples here. I promise I didn't plan this. Um, but use colors that mix together um, or look pretty good together. Otherwise, you're just going to have a muddy mess. Okay. So I just kind of lightly blocked that out. Now, the rubbing alcohol part. The part that makes this so fun and so cool is that it's gonna create a really cool texture. So, when you do this, um, you're going to want to make sure to squeeze out the water in your brush. And you can wipe it off with your paper towel if you want to, too. Um, I'm gonna use a smaller brush here. This, this brush is like ginormous. I hope you guys aren't using some that are this big. 
But watch what happens, and this only works if it's wet. As I put this dots on it, it kind of pushes the color away. And you don't just have to do dots, you can actually paint a line, but it creates a really, really cool effect, okay? Now before you guys um, try it, I wanna show you with a darker color over here so that you guys can see it a little bit easier. So I'm actually gonna use black. So I put my black down and then I take my rubbing alcohol and it just pushes the colors away and just kind of adds a really cool texture. I did too much talking over here and I wasn't working quickly enough so that's why I didn't get that cool effect. But you can see it creates this really kind of funky design. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pause the video and you can try out that rubbing alcohol technique. All right, we are back and we're gonna be ready for our last, um, our last watercolor technique of this first part of the video and you guys will do more watercolors tomorrow. So for this one, um, I haven't used any warm colors, so I'm gonna use, um, oops, sorry. Back to our checklist, we have done rubbing alcohol, okay? Um, I know we have four sections filled in, but we're gonna use, and if you want to, guys, um, actually, I didn't think about this till right now, go ahead and label the tape um, next to the one that you did so that you can kind of keep track of it. Wow, I'm so smart. Okay, and now I know that I told you guys to do um, dry brush here, or wa a wash here, but this is actually gonna be your dry brush, which we're gonna get to tomorrow. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick this section up here to be um, the saran wrap. So I gotta move this a little bit. Okay, and guys, rule number one of watercolor, I know that there are going to be times that you wanna pick this up and show somebody across the room, but what will happen is all these watercolors will run down. And we don't want that. Okay, so for this one, you are going to need your piece of saran wrap, okay? You know, like that stuff you cover food with to keep it longer, okay? Don't do anything with it yet, we'll talk about it. But for this one, okay, this one you do have to work quickly or the effect is not going to turn out very well. So you once again will want to mix colors together. Okay, you'll wanna mix colors together. Um, it looks cooler if there's colors mixed together. So I'm gonna use those warm colors. And guys, I know like if you see my water cup here, it's very dirty. But this is just practice so you don't need to worry about filling it up. Okay, so I'm gonna mix in some red with this. I promise this color doesn't look as gross as it does on this video. Okay, now if this one is too dry, it is not going to work very well, so you need to work quickly. I can still see that that's wet and that's good. So now you are going to take your piece of saran wrap and we don't, I'll have students that try to like spread it all out and just like put it over top and stretch it out like that. We don't want that. You actually want to wrinkle it up and put it down and pat it down and then just leave it, okay? Um, I'm gonna move this camera so you can see what it's doing. You're not gonna fully see what it's doing until tomorrow, but do you see how some of that texture is kind of getting started here? Um, we'll take a look at that tomorrow, so leave it on. If it is not staying, if it's not staying down, that means you didn't have enough water, so you can go ahead and try to do it again. If it doesn't work, you can do it again tomorrow. And like you can see mine, um, it doesn't fill the entire, my saran wrap doesn't fill the entire sheet of paper, and that's okay. 
All right. Uh, hey guys, we've got to really work on this value here. Okay. So this is where we are going to stop today. Um, you can just go ahead and put these papers in your bin. I know that they are wet, but keep them flat and you can just kind of curve your paper a little bit. Oops. Curve your paper a little bit and it will be just fine, okay? That way we're not dealing with the drying rack. So go ahead and put all of your um, materials away. Um, clean everything up. Everything should be back where you found it, and we will continue part two tomorrow.